Hello everybody, and welcome back to yet another Deathmatch Civilization Overview. This time I'm going to be looking at the Spanish. Now, they are a very good Deathmatch Civilization, because they do have very strong Heavy Cavalry, which is a theme in good Deathmatch Civilizations, but yet they also have a very open tech tree, which allows them to counter almost anything their opponent throws at them, and it allows them to also excel on almost any map. Let's take a look at them. Now, before I jump into this overview, the reason I chose the Spanish is because they won the poll that I had on my previous Deathmatch Civilization overview. However, I'm not going to put one of those polls up on this video because I already know what civilization I want to do next. And so, let's talk about the Spanish bonuses. Their first bonus is that builders work 30% faster. Now at first, this sounds like an amazing bonus for Deathmatch, because it would greatly increase the speed at which they build those first starting buildings. However, keep in mind that the Spanish miss Treadmill Crane to balance this out, and a Treadmill Crane is a plus 20% bonus on creation speed. And so, this is a nice small bonus that has a net of 10% faster than another civilization that has Treadmill Crane. Their next bonus is that blacksmith upgrades don't cost any gold. That's an incredible saving of 1695 gold. As a deathmatch player, we start in the post-imperial age, so this doesn't affect me. Oh well, another useless bonus. Their next bonus is that cannon galleons benefit from ballistics. What this means is that if an Akalan Galleon is shooting at a moving object, it will shoot in front of that object and shoot where that object is going to be instead of where that object is. However, this bonus also makes the Spanish Cannon Galleons shoot way faster. And what I mean by this is that the physical cannonball that's flying through the air is actually flying a lot faster. And this really makes using them against other ships a little bit better. Now, people say that this means that you can have a full Spanish Cannon Galleon Navy, and I do not think that this is true. However, this does mean that they are a lot more effective at being a support unit in the back of your Navy than a normal Cannon Galleon would. To help the Cannon Galleon and all the other Gunpowder Spanish units, the Spanish have another bonus, which is that Gunpowder units fire 15% faster. And what this means is that the time between each shot is reduced by 15%. Now, Bombard Cannons, Hand Cannoneers, and Elite Cannon Galleons are all affected by this bonus, but Bombard Towers are not. Another thing to notice is that for some reason in the tests I did, the Elite Cannon Galleon would actually fire before a Teuton Cannon Galleon, and I'm not quite sure why this is. Also, this bonus did make the hand cannoneer shoot faster, but it would start shooting later. I don't know if that this is just because of my test, or if it's just because of the way this bonus works. However, it's still a really good bonus. However, unfortunately though, I would honestly rather the Teuton bonus that allows hand cannoneers to walk over cliffs, because for some reason this guy could do so. Now, if you thought all those gunpowder bonuses were pretty cool, wait until you see what their unique unit is. It's the Conquistador, which is basically a mounted hand cannoneer. I've already looked at this in a previous video, which I suggest you watch! Self-promotion! However, what the Elite Conquistador basically is, is a hand cannoneer that has better stats, better speed, which allows it to hit and run, except it does not have the bonus damage versus infantry, which means that the majority of the time I would use the Conquistador, especially in a deathmatch and in combination with a Paladin. However, I might use the Hand Cannoneer if my opponent is trying to have a mono infantry arm. The Spanish also have a second unique unit, which is the Missionary from the Monastery. 
it's basically a mounted monk, but way worse. Its conversion range is less, and it does have speed, but it can't pick up relics. In all honesty, this footage you're seeing right here, I made for the sole purpose of this video, because I've actually never used a Conquistador in a real game. I don't know, I just don't really see the use for it. Maybe I'm wrong, maybe some Deathmatch Pro will tell me that there is a use for it, and I assume that it could keep up with the Cavalry Army a little bit, but it's really not that great. However, monks and missionaries in general were helped in the HD expansions, because in these expansions, they added another unique technology which allows monks to convert faster. And I really like this tech, because it allows you to steal your enemy elephants way faster, which is basically what monks are used for mostly in Deathmatch. I also really like their original unique technology, which is Supremacy, and I'm sure that you've heard a lot about this tech. Basically, it makes the Spanish villagers way tougher by giving them 40 more HP, 6 more attack, and 2 more of each armor. As a deathmatch player, I really like this bonus because it means that when that first enemy scout comes to try and pick off my villager, it's a lot harder for my opponent to do so, and I've noticed that this really helps my starts, and that I have a lot smoother starts when I play as the Spanish. And finally, their team bonus is that trade units generate more gold. Now this is a really great bonus for Deathmatch, because the majority of your gold income in a team game is going to be based off of trade, and if this bonus allows you to get away with a little bit less trade cards, which means in turn you'll have more army on the field, which will really help your entire team. With all of that said, I think it's now time to look at the Spanish tech tree. Now the first thing to note is that they have all of the blacksmith techs, so the majority of their units will be just as good if not better than most civilizations. Let's start with their archers. And yep, here is the first part where we see a unit that is not as good as most civilizations. And this is, the Spanish don't even have access to the crossbowmen, they only have feudal age archers. Now from a deathmatch perspective, this loss is not that huge, because in all honesty, it's really the same size loss as if it had only access to crossbowmen and not arbalists, because that's a castle age unit and death matches in post imperial age. And so I think that the Spanish have above average archers because they are fully upgraded, and I think that their unique unit would kind of count as an archer. They don't have Parthian tactics, but I think that the Conquistador kind of fulfills the role of a heavy cavalry archer anyway. Their infantry is average because they do have all of the blacksmith techs, but they have no bonuses that really help them out there. Their cavalry is highly above average, and the reason I give them this grade is because while it is true that their heavy cavalry archers aren't anything special, and that they don't have camels, the reality is that many deathmatch cavalry civilizations don't have camels, and they have the elite conquistador, which is an excellent substitute for the heavy cavalry archer. It might also be pointed out that while the Spanish don't really have any bonuses for their paladins, that's true of all the civilizations except for the Franks and maybe the Huns. So I think that the Conquistador really does put their cavalry among the top cavalry in the game. The Spanish have average siege because they lack siege engineers, they lack heavy scorpion, and siege onagers. Yes, it is true that they do have siege ram and the bombard cannon bonus, but I think that siege engineers is more important than both of those really, and to be honest, their siege doesn't really stand out above the rest. However, it's still pretty nice to use the siege ram. The Spanish do have very good defenses that are above average. However, the reason they're not highly above average would be because that build speed bonus is negated a little bit by the lack of treadmill crane and because they don't have siege engineers. It seems to me that using onagers when you're in a defensive position can be really effective because onagers can be very good at taking out lots of enemy units and the Spanish onagers really aren't anything special and they don't have camels so the Spanish have good defenses but not top tier defenses. The Spanish Navy is highly above average, because they miss nothing except for heated shot, 
the build bonus actually is pretty substantial on a water map because you can get that first dock up first. And their elite cannon galleons are probably the best in the game. Now, I'm not going to grade either their monks or their economy, but just know that for their monks, they are very good because they miss nothing, and because they, in the HD expansions, they have a great bonus that helps with their conversions. And their economy really isn't anything that special because they miss both gold shaft mining and crop rotation, which means it can be a little clunky at times getting your economy up and rolling when you're a Spanish player in a deathmatch game. So that's my overview of the tech tree of the Spanish. I gave them two highly above average grades, and in all honesty, I was on the fence for both of them. However, I think that in the end, they're both deserved. Please tell me if you disagree in any way. And with the tech tree out of the way, now let's talk about deathmatch strategy for a Spanish player. Now, the Spanish do have a very good rush, because they do build a little bit faster, and because they have fully upgraded paladins. So what you'll want to do in a deathmatch game is start by creating lots of villagers, you'll build a house, you'll build some stables, and you'll send your Hazar to the enemy base. From those stables, you'll create paladins. After you make a couple stables, you'll create some barracks, from which you'll create either champions or halberdiers. You'll want to have the gather points of your military creation buildings over at an enemy's base, so that way you'll be sending your units to them as quickly as possible. After you've built up your initial base of stables and of barracks, you'll then want to create castles to create conquistadors. You'll then want to follow this up by a forward castle and three forward workshops, so that way you can create siege and yet more units. After you will this, you'll want to put town centers on gold and on food, because these are the two resources that you'll probably run out of the quickest. Once you're out of the rush stage, your standard unit composition will be paladins, conquistadors, halbs, and rams. However, you will change this up a little bit depending on what your opponent is making. For example, when going up against archers, you'll want to add skirmishers into the mix because they are a great counter versus archers. Paladins and skirmishers will get the archers. Paladins will also get onagers, which will probably be used against your own archers. And the skirms and conquistadors will get enemy halbs that will try to take away your paladins. Versus infantry, you'll probably be using lots of paladins and hazars, along with conquistadors or hand cannoneers. The paladins will take out siege, arbalests, or enemy skirmishers that the infantry player might be making, and the conquistadors will be great in supporting those paladins and mowing down the infantry. If your opponent is using just infantry, I'd suggest instead using hand cannoneers instead of conquistadors, because they really are better versus infantry. Versus Cavalry, you'll use your standard unit composition, except for you'll have a greater emphasis on Halberdiers in order to take out the enemy Cavalry, and you'll need to make sure to have enough Conquistadors to defend against their opponent's Halberdiers. Your own Paladins or Hussars will do pretty well at taking out units that, such as Archers or Siege that would normally be used to take out your Halbs. If your opponent instead tries to go for a really heavy siege strategy, which will oftentimes be onagers and halberdiers, you'll want to use paladins and hussars and bombard cannons in order to snipe enemy siege, you'll want to use conquistadors versus halberdiers, and you'll want to make some bombard towers in order to slow the push of those enemy siege, which will require them to make either bombard cannons or rams of their own, which will be relatively easy for you to deal with. If you're on a map such as Oasis or Michi, where the opponent can do an effective infrastructure strategy with lots of siege and bombard towers, I would suggest that you use bombard cannons, your own bombard towers, and rams, along with paladins, hussars, conquistadors, or halves, basically whatever other unit you need counter whatever other unit the infrastructure person is playing with. However, with these tips in mind, you need to analyze each situation individually to see what your best army composition will be. More often than not, you'll use paladins, conquistadors, halbs, and some form of siege, which would be rams or bombard cannons. 
Sometimes you might want to use more Zars to be suicide units against enemy siege. Sometimes you want Mike to go with more trash units if your opponent is trying to have a really gold heavy army and it's a one versus one. The main thing is just don't follow a formula and instead figure out what the best units for you to make would be based on whatever situation you're in. Now, it's very difficult for me to tell you how to counter the Spanish, because while they are a cavalry-heavy civilization, I think it's safe to say, they're also a civilization that is excellent at taking out your infantry. So I think that the best way to counter the Spanish would be to take advantage of the fact that chances are you have a better economy than them, because they do miss two very important economy upgrades, and you'll want to, instead of trying to use a really strong unit type, such as going with pure infantry, or through a lot of really strong archers, you'd instead want to make a really strong mix of units that tries to complement your civ bonuses as best you can. I think that what this means is that instead of trying to counter the Spanish with a pre-made set of units that you'll make, you'll instead want to look at the situation, see what your opponent is making, and counter that, and then be ready to counter the unit he's going to send to counter your counter. Come to think of it, this is what I say for almost every civilization, but this really is how you make a strong army. Well, that's it for this video, everybody. The Spanish are a great deathmatch civilization with some really solid unit combinations. I hope that you found my overview of them helpful and that maybe because of it you'll be able to use them effectively in a deathmatch game. If there's anything I left out or that you have a question on, please feel free to ask me in a comment below. I'll try to answer. See you later and have fun.